This video covers the splice procedure for Yale Portage Industrial Single Braid Eye Splice. Using an appropriately sized fit, make a mark two fit lengths from the end of the rope. Form the desired eye size and make a corresponding mark on the opposite side of the eye. Measure one and one short fit lengths from the second eye mark to make your exit mark. Measure one and one short fit length from the end of the rope and begin making your taper pattern. Mark the first and fourth strand pair and a single end from the ninth strand pair. Use your taper tool to cut the five marked strands. Remove the five strands to complete the taper. Cut the end of your rope at a 45 degree angle and retape it tightly. Insert the tapered end of the rope into the hollow end of the fit and secure it with tape. Pass your fit through the center of the rope at the second eye mark being careful not to split any of the strands and to have an equal number of strands on opposite sides of the fit. Pull the tail of the splice through and align the first and second eye mark. Form your first brummel by passing the fit back through the center of the rope, two sets of strands up from the location it had previously exited. Count an additional two sets of strands from the location the rope previously exited and insert the fit into the hollow center of the rope. Pass the fit all the way through to the exit mark, being careful not to snag the inside of the rope. Be sure the first and second eye marks are aligned and tighten the brummels by pulling on the tail against the eye. Milk the slack out of the splice to find the location the tail will need to be cut. Grab the tail at the location it exits the splice and extract a short length. Use your scissors to cut the excess tail and unravel the remaining strands. Use your scissors to cut a gradual taper along the remaining length of tail. Milk the slack out of the splice completely bearing the tail. This splice must be completed with a whip lock or box stitch approximately one inch from the base of the last problem. To form the whip lock, begin by placing a short loop of whipping twine approximately one inch below the base of the last brummel. Tightly wrap the whipping twine around the circumference of the rope, working away from the tail of the twine. The wrap should lay flat against the rope with no twist or lumps. Continue wrapping the rope until the whipping is the same length as the diameter of the rope. Cut the twine long enough to complete the stitching. Pass the long end of the twine through the small loop formed at the beginning of the whipping. Pull the entire length of the twine through the loop until it is tight. Cinch the whipping by pulling the short tail and burying the loop beneath the wraps of the whipping. Position the needle on the center of your whipping twine and pass the needle through the center of the rope at the location where the twine exits the whipping. Hold the twine tight, leaving a short tail exposed on the opposite side of the rope. Lay the twine parallel to the rope and pass the needle straight through the rope at the top of the whipping. Lay the twine parallel to the rope. At the bottom of the whipping, pass the needle through at a 45 degree angle, so it exits the rope in between the two previously formed strands. Pass the needle straight through the rope at the top of the whipping, so that it exits in the middle of the two previously formed strands on the opposite side of the rope. Lay the final strand parallel to the rope. Pass the needle through the bottom of the whipping at a 45 degree angle. The needle should exit adjacent to the location where the tail of the whipping exits the rope. Trim any excess whipping twine. When performed correctly, the whipping will have four strands symmetrically located around the circumference of the rope. 
use a torch or a lighter to melt the ends of the whipping twine. 